Okay, welcome everybody. Today's talk is on role of topology in the study of cascade evolutions, physical knot link complex systems. And this talk is given by Professor Xin Liu. So Xin, up to you, take it away. Ah, thank you so much, Renzo. Uh, thank you so much uh, for invitation to give this GeoTop A talk. Uh, uh, I think I have to present my thanks to, to Carlo and so many technician uh, supporters. Uh, and today I, I really, I'm really uh, flattered to have so many people in the audience. Uh, yeah, uh, so uh, let me just start my talk. Uh, this work is based on my collaboration with uh, Renzo and my uh, students uh, Xin Fei and uh, Guan Hao. Yeah. Uh, firstly, I'd like to present my motivation of this work, uh, as well as some background uh, knowledge or just uh, some thinking of my of, of my research. Uh, that is first some uh, experimental observations. Then um, I view give some. Uh, of my recent thinking about uh, turbulence, uh, some need in turbulence to do the uh, same type of work. Uh, in this talk, I will focus on uh, three tools, um, crossing numbers or rope lengths, that is to one. Second one is home for the PT polynomial values, uh, direct uh, competition of the home for the PT values. Then the third one is uh, topological complex uh, complexity degrees of knots and links um, with respect to uh, the round uh, polynomial basis in a uh, algebraic space. So the first two serves as an example to show the direct relationship between topology and energy. The second one the first of the two, um, that work was done by uh, Renzo and, uh, and uh, his uh, collaborators, for example, uh, his former students, uh, Francesca. Uh, and the second one, the uh, third one, uh, they are some a kind of, uh, from my point of view, some uh, pure mathematical work. Uh, we still need to develop the uh, physical side uh, of the uh, to two and three. Okay, let me start from the uh, motivation, background and motivation. Uh, let's start from some recent uh, experimental observations. The first one is uh, this Nature Physics publication by, uh, by uh, Chicago uh, university group, that is William Irvine's group. Uh, the first line, those pictures are about experiments, laboratory experiments for real water. Yeah, uh, I think this work is very famous. Uh, a truffle knot was realized in water. Yeah, then the truffle, the, the, the truffle will involve uh, degenerate, degenerated to half link first, and then to to trivial circles. So these three pictures, photos, are reproducing these three fix in the sequence. Uh, this picture, this picture comes from uh, Chicago groups. 2016 work that is about uh, superfluids. We can see some degeneration of knots and the links. Yeah. So we can see some cascade degeneration happens in ordinary water and uh, superfluids. Oh. Why? Okay. Uh, another one is numerical experiment of uh, UC Davis group, that is uh, Javier, uh, Mario, uh, Shimokawa 
they are in the same group. Uh, the first line comes from uh, 2013 Pnas. That is a sequence showing the uh, decay of DNA recombination. Yeah, from here to here. That is uh, uh, T two six uh, torus link with six crossing sites. Then five T two five. Then T two four T two three. That is travel, and then half link and and so on. Right. Uh, the Davis, the UC Davis group, continue this work and uh, show some details in the in the decay procedure. That is from here T two six to the final point, the circle. There are not only one root. This work just gives one root. Actually, there are still other roots. So in this paper, they show there are nine roots from here to here. <clears throat> If we just uh, uh, count it, you may see there are nine roots from here to here. But that one, the uh, first uh, discovered one, has the largest probability to occur. So, in fluid mechanics, in different contexts, fluid mechanics and the uh, DNA biology, the same phenomenon is observed. That is, uh, a not complex system usually is highly unstable. It tends, it tends to experience a free degeneration. That is, uh, from high complexity state. To a low complexity state, through a series of midway stages, every stage is a knot or link. You can see every stage in the in the picture here, here, here. Every mid midway stage is a knot or link. But between different stages, stages topological transitions happen. That means some reconnection. Events happen, right? So uh, on this on this point, we just have some some picture in our mind. Maybe for fluid vortex tangles with different topology, they will form a discrete high high hierarchy of uh, structural complexity. Yeah, every level corresponding to a certain energy level. Yeah, because uh, from the physics point of view, a system always uh, involves from a high energy level to a low energy level. Yeah. So the above phenomenon just the recall of a memory about uh, Vladimir Arnold's proposal uh, in, in a long time ago. Yeah. Uh, he just uh, proposed: Is it possible to find some algebraic invariants whose mathematical hierarchy could be used to manage the hierarchy of physical states in the system? That means uh, maybe we can just uh, find some mathematical uh, mathematical system to manage the physics physical system. So that is. Uh, Arnold's thinking, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. So in the, the language of dynamic systems, uh, a root decreasing topological complexity implies the ex existence of dynamic flow. Yeah. So that is Arnold's original idea. So uh, in this work, we just want to. Realize, uh, want to want to turn Arnold's uh, design into a truth, into a fact. That is our dream. That is uh, our observation. Not topology has a hierarchy structure. Not energy also has a hierarchy structure. So can we just use the first line to 
to manage the second line. So our uh, first mission is to find, our dream is to find a scalar to play the role of topological complexity degree in order to tackle complexity of knot system. Second mission is we should establish a kind of one-to-one -one correspondence between complexity degree and energy. The first one should be a scalar because the second one is scalar. We want to use the first one to manage the second one. That means we want to construct a topological hierarchy to manage the energy hierarchy. So in this, in the following, we will introduce three tools, row plans, uh, home fully polynomial values, mm -hmm. and uh, complexity degrees in algebraic space. That is uh, our motivation. Below, I want to add some words. Uh, so this page and the next page, they are just the, my thinking in the past uh, two or three weeks. That is, uh, from the point of view of turbulence, we will also need to find something in this, in this direction, right? Uh, we know uh, turbulence is, a, is at the core of vortex dynamics. Vortex dynamics is just concerning about creation, evolution of vortices and the vorticity, and their interactions with other um, uh, fluid structures. The emphasis is placed on the role uh, they play in generation development and uh, uh, flow control in turbulence. Uh, usually, uh, we, we, we know very well, uh, in the area of turbulence, there are two major uh, directions of research. The first one is statistics and the probability, right? Um, including Kolmogorov's uh, scaling law, that is, uh, EK, K is um, uh, proportional to, to this, this power, right? Uh, in uh, classical homogeneous isotropic turbulence. So the starting point of the first direction is considerable, a large number of vortices. So that is uh, why we call that a statistical uh, point of view. The second uh, direction is geometric and the topological analysis for micro coherent structures of fluid flows. So that is focusing on constructing uh, characteristic, uh, say, uh, topological invariance uh, to study the geometry and the topology of some vertex configurations, right? So I think our research uh, below is in the second direction, geometric and the topological analysis. The strategy of this direction is um, because due to the difficulty of uh, geometric and the topological analysis, so people have to start from simple configuration, this, 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 trifle and uh, uh, fig eight knot and, and so on. Then if we will res uh, get some um, awesome uh, results, we can just uh, extend it, turn them to some uh, complex systems uh, with large number of components or with higher topological complexity, right? So that is a uh, idea of the second uh, research direction. Uh, I think uh, because Carlo is in the in the audience, I think uh, I want to uh, cite his work in the past years. That is an uh, important progress. Uh, they, uh, he and uh, his group just uh, uh, did some very interesting work for superfluids, quantum fluids. And they just. Uh, found so many uh, vertex nodes and the links, then pick up 
the leading power of their Alexander Conway polynomials. Then they just found. I think I can just make it bigger. They just found a interesting parallel, new to this power minus uh, three halves, right? That is the probability mass functions is proportional to this power. So that is uh, similar as uh, Pomogorov's power. Yeah. Interesting. So, so any questions or comments from the audience? No? Okay, let's go on, move to the uh, first work, first tool. Uh, this tool, for this section, uh, I just want to review uh, Renzo's work in the past years uh, on crossing numbers or rope lengths. Yeah. Uh, this section serves as an example to show topology can be directly related to energy. Energy, topolo topology, topology, energy, they are uh, closed related to each other. Yeah. Uh, Renzo uh, found an uh, interesting logarithmic law between ground state energy spectrum and knot link numbers. That is a uh, sorting for the uh, knots and links. So magnetic knot. Uh, that this picture is showing a magnetic knot. A magnetic knot is a magnetic flux tube. That is a uh, intersection. That is K. K is the uh, core line of the tube, and uh, that one is a uh, cross section. We can just regard it as a as a disk, right? With radius r, the magnetic flux is at this. S is a cross section. Uh, magnetic energy is this. So I think we can just find uh, the setting uh, from in, in many textbooks. This page, this slide, just to show magnetic relax relaxation. This tube and this tube. They share the same uh, magnetic flux, but that one has a thinner tube. This one, a uh, uh, um, thick tube. That one is uh, is called a tight state, and this one is a this one is a trifle. That one is a half link. It, it's also a magnetic relaxation procedure. Uh, then, so if we just consider, consider, uh, I think I just delete one page. Uh, if we just uh, think about, ah, uh, yes, signature preserving condition. Signature preserving just means to preserve, to preserve the total volume of the tube, of the tube. We just keep the volume preserved. Then we keep the magnetic flux preserved. Under these two conditions, uh, we can find we can we can find the uh, total energy, magnetic energy, m star. Its relationship to the topology of the shape. Here we have to introduce a uh, dimensionless uh, quantity rope length, which is key in this study. Uh, rope length is defined by the ratio between uh, L and R. L is what? L is the total length, total length, total length of the of the knot, total length of the of the link, right? R is a radius of the cross section, cross section. So this one is dimensionless. Uh, we can see 
in this picture, lens L is bigger, but the radius is small, so the ratio is very big. But for that one, lens reduces to the uh, minimum, but the radius just inflates to the uh, maximum. So lambda reaches the maximum. All right. So this ratio reaches the maximum. So we just uh, we just uh, uh, focus on this tight state and uh, compute the energy of that. Uh, here I just uh, delete some details, uh, but cite within the the major main results here. That is the magnetic magnetic energy is uh, proportional to to lambda of this power to this power. Then we can we can list out the tight state magnetic energy for different knots and links, different knots and links. So uh, Renzo and the collaborators just uh, calculate the first uh, 250 prime knots to find their energy. They also compute, uh, computed the first uh, 110 prime links to find their magnetic energy. Meanwhile, they also use uh, use this punch K to 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 sort all those knots and links. Then they can produce a plot that is magnetic. Uh, energy versus the sorting of knots, or the energy versus the uh, sorting of links. They are two parallels, parallels. That is two expressions. Very interesting. Yeah. So from these two expressions, we can see the left hand side is energy. Right hand side, topology. Why topology? Because this punch K comes from a sorting of different knots. Different knots have different topology. So the right hand side is a sequence of different topological shapes. But the left hand side is giving us different magnetic energy. So this expression just gives us the relationship between energy and topology. Section, this section serves as an example to show, yes, topology and energy, they has relationship. Yeah. Okay, so far, any questions or comments? Uh, you can hear me? Yes, no? yes. Yeah, good. <laughs> Your previous slide, I just want to know exactly what it is that is plotted along the bottom there. Uh, ah. Is that, is that the crossing number or the of the knot? Uh, or what is uh, that symbol? Oh, uh, um, this yeah, this what, punch what K? Is, yeah, what is it? Ah, uh, yes. What, uh, I think Renzo, they just uh, uh, list out all the 250 knots. They make yeah. a sorting. How to how to make the sorting? Um, firstly, they just I I think I think all those points are uh, classified into different groups. Uh, for example, uh, ten ten crossing sites. Uh, here, twenty crossing size here or something. Oh, it is it is crossing uh, crossing number then. Uh, um, well, if I if I may add, uh, yeah. the actual the actual presentation is in terms of uh, rope length. So data uh, data are taken 
by Ridge Runner computation uh, done by Cantarella and Rodin and others. And uh, uh, the, on the axis, you basically see rope length according to knot type. Ah, rope length is plotted uh, along here. And this is energy as a function of rope length, then. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mm. I, I think, I think uh, in the last. Uh, uh, I have to make it smaller. Okay, so I, I guess yeah. this uh, this result is from your work. Do you think so? Um, this yes, F star so. equal to something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Uh, I, I, that fam formula looks quite familiar. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> very, I, very familiar. Yes, I have done yeah. that then with we after at tree um, back in the nineteen nineties. Yes. Yeah, and then we can just uh, input, uh, substitute L star with something lambda. Yeah. Yeah. Then we will receive, uh, we will just uh, uh, um, obtain this result where small m is this is this. Uh, small m is expressed by the rope length. Rope length. Then we focus on the h equal to z uh, zero case. We have this. Yeah. Yeah. The following work is based on that expression. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. And then next, uh, next uh, uh, two is Humphrey PT polynomial. Uh, uh, yes, I have a question. Yeah. Is there, is there a simple physical interpretation of that um, that logarithm that law that um, it increases? Carlo, is, is that you, Carlo? Yes, it no? is me. Oh, okay. Yes. Can Can you repeat your 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 question? Uh, is there a simple physical interpretation for this uh, behavior, the four third law that? Um, the, there is a fast increase and then it flattens. Uh, can I? Can I? Can Can you read my uh, my screen? Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, sorry. Can you repeat your question? Uh, you mean a physical physical what? F physical example. The physical interpretation of the previous picture. You know, the, in the previous screen. Yeah. Uh, can you explain? Is is there a reason for this behavior? Some intuition, some physical intuition for this. Hmm. I think it's a it's a hard question. Uh, last month when Renzo was in Beijing, we just uh, had a discussion on that. Um. Let me see. For example, if a tight travel degenerates to a tight half link, what's the difference between this one and that one? Um, let us consider a reconnection event happened to this travel somewhere, for example, here or somewhere. Uh, then after the after the reconnection after the reconnection the travel will have more room to degen degenerate to this half link uh, can you uh, can you get uh, my idea carlo okay yeah thanks Thank you. Uh, I, I'm not very sure if my uh, explanation is good or not, but that is really my thinking. Uh, from, for example, now for this tight travel, it is tight, yes. 
But after the reconnection, maybe it still has some room to keep going to do the magnetic relaxation until it reaches the next uh, threshold. Uh, hopefully, so that is my 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 understanding. I, I don't know if my understanding is good or not. I think you should be able to calculate the decrease in energy. If the volume here is the same as the volume of the hop link, then uh, and the flux is just phi for both, then um, you should be able to calculate the energy and show and demonstrate this um, this decrease. Don't you think? Uh, yeah. If I am doing this work, I just uh, directly sub subtract. The energy of of half link from the energy of travel. Yes, because that one is co uh, is obtained from the calculation you mentioned. His the half link's knowledge uh, energy is also obtained from uh, the procedure you mentioned. So we just directly subtract one from the other. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. So that that is my understanding. Yeah. Okay. Uh, shall we shall we move to the next section? Okay. Now, Humphrey Pt polynomial. Uh, this work was based on um, Hughes Davis publication in. 2013, Panas, I think. Ah,、oh, yes, yes, here, Panas, 2013. Yeah. They found such a such a sequence from T to six to N naught. Renzo and I just wanted to find an explanation, a mathematical, pure mathematical explanation for, for this degeneration sequence. So we were using the Humphrey PT polynomial values, a direct use of that value.、Uh, firstly, let's let's say something about the、uh, Humphrey PT polynomial, the not polynomial.、Uh, current approach、uh, to people just use to characterize、uh, fluid. Not topology is linking numbers, self-linking numbers,、uh, mutual linking numbers, and so on. Right? That is linking numbers in fluid mechanics, which is obtained from helicity. Helicity is defined as this triple integral: u dot omega. Omega is vorticity. U velocity. Right? Uh, then we know this very famous result obtained by、uh, Case and、uh, Renzo in the past years. That is,、uh, that is an interpretation, topological interpretation for helicity. Helicity is expressed by self-linking numbers and the linking numbers.、Uh, but there is、uh, a question that、uh, sometimes linking numbers cannot. Uh, distinguish essential different, essentially different topologies. For example, this trivial circle and this fig eight knot, they share the same self-linking number zero. And these three guys, disjoint three circles, and Burmi rings and Weihan、uh, links, they share the same linking number zero. So.、Uh, We have to find some、uh, some more、uh, practical, more practical topological tools to、uh, label the topology of of configurations. So、uh, in 2015, Renzo and I just、uh, found. 
a, a way to construct homophily PT polynomials in terms of the power of helicity. Here, uh, helicity is uh, written as Lie helicity. Uh, the term uh, Lie helicity uh, was used by by uh, by Mitch Berger and the and the um, I think Dundee Dundee group. I think, yeah. Uh, for very thin filaments, if the filaments are very thin, then helicity can be written. At this lie integrals. So, uh, uh, how to how to understand this result? How to understand this result? Uh, I want to give an explanation as Taylor expansion. Let's consider Taylor expansion of this, of the right hand side. The first term in the Taylor expansion. Is a pure edge, right? Which reproduce the original edge. But the second term will have two lie integrals. Two lie integrals just means what means the intersection between two filament. Uh, Filament intersections. Then we will have even higher terms, three terms, uh, third order terms, fourth order terms, and so on. Right? They all contain intersections, in, in interactions between strands of filaments. All right. Here I just uh, ignore the proof of this theorem, but only cite some direct results. That is for half link. We have those uh, homophily PT polynomials. Uh, for left-handed trifle, right-handed trifle, we have those homophily PT uh, values and so uh, polynomials and so on. The third column just to give numerical values for those homophily PT polynomials by substituting a equal to something. Z equal to something. We have some evaluations for those. So we just have the numericals. Then we move to the torus links. That is uh, the sequence obtained by Mario and uh, uh, Javier and others, right? We computed. The homophily PT values for those, and find a recursive, recursive relationship for the for the uh, torus links and the knots. Right, then we obtain such a monotonically decreasing sequence for T two n knots and links. That is a monotonically decreasing thing. So that is the result. Yeah. Uh, at the beginning of next section, I will um, I will show I will just talk about the weakness of this this uh, method. So that is the end of this section. Uh, any questions or comments? Okay. No. So now let's move to the next section. What's the dis disadvantage of direct use of not polynomial values? Here's the deleted one one page. Uh, I want to say if we consider two trifle knots, one is left-handed, the other right-handed, then if we, we we can see these two knots, they have very similar topology. But if we compute the uh, hopefully, PT values or Jones polynomial values direct competition. They will have totally different values. 
One is very big, the other very small. But the topology, their topology, is so same, uh, uh, so same. Why they have so different values? The other, the second disadvantage, disadvantage is this formula is holding for torus knots and links. And this sequence, monotonically decreasing sequence, is just for torus knots and links. If we are considering other category of knots or links, I cannot guarantee such a beautiful result. So we have to develop some more general method to, to do the job. So um, the idea we got is to develop a algebraic space method. That space should be spanned by some uh, orthogonal polynomial basis. The first uh, uh, candidate we choose was the Lerang polynomial basis because the Lerang was uh, was the uh, simplest one. Uh, recently, my student and I we just uh, tried other polynomial basis. For example, uh, Hermi, uh, Her Hermitian Hermitian polynomial and uh, Alexander Conway poly polynomial. Uh, The result was the same, almost the same. The main result was the same. The main conclusion was the same. The uh, complexity sequence was the same. Uh, only in some tiny difference. I, I will just uh, uh, point it out uh, in following slides. So uh, uh, I can just ensure you that the round polynomial is good enough for our current use. Uh, technically, we just uh, compute the uh, coordinates of knots and links. Then we can find some root of degeneration, right? That is, this page just to give a table of contents. Yeah. Uh, in following, I will just show you the details. We will find minimal unlinking pathways as geodesics. Geodesic here just means the shortest, shortest route, shortest pathway. Yeah, just like what happened in uh, general relativity. Yeah. Then I we can also compute the probability of occurrence for every route. Finally, we will find a best fit curve uh, to, 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 to mimic the, uh, to do some uh, mimic things. Yeah. That will be a logarithmic law. So our idea is a knot or link spontaneously degenerates from its position towards the uh, origin point of the space. That means, um, let us think about a knot or link. It has a Jones polynomial, characteristic Jones polynomial. Then that Jones polynomial, we want to uh, give it a representation point in a abstract algebraic space. Then every knot or link has a point in the space. So uh, uh, algebraic expression obtains a geometric expression in the in the space, right? Secondly, A physical, uh, a physical knots are uh, different, different physical sti states 
which has different complexity, they form a series of equivalent surfaces labeled by a scalar. Uh, the decaying path is equivalent to a degenerating root penetrating the, those equipotential surfaces. A physical state is an intermediate point, and all midway points form a cascade. So all the above ideas just form such a picture. That means we try to try to give every knot a geometric representation in the in the algebraic space. For example, this L three is one knot. Then this point, this knot, wants to degenerate to the trivial zero, trivial origin. It has a distance from its position to the origin because it is a geometric point, that is geometric point. We can always com compute the distance between these two. We can develop some method to compute the distance. Then this green line, the, the green curve, just the shows all the points with the same distance. If we regard the distance as complexity degree, then all those points on this green curve, they share the same complexity degree. So this green curve just means an equi, uh, well, equipotential surface, that is an equi-complexity degree surface. Therefore, we will have different surfaces. Every surface has a complexity degree. Then, if this point L3, if it wants to degenerate to the origin, then its root must pass through every surface. Every interaction point is a middle midway state. Every state is a knot or link. That is a midway knot or link. Intermediate knot or link. That is a midway physical state. Our thinking is, if we ask L3 to do some free degeneration without any external forcing or, or just a operation, then it will automatically degenerate to the origin. It could choose such a direct path or this, uh, this curly root. We just uh, call that a uh, 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 detour, detour root, right? But it never ever goes such a way, that is, from L3 to an even higher L4, and then to here. No. So uh, this picture just gives us a dynamic picture. I always say, uh, I, I always think for mathematicians, they just uh, character, characterize or label every knot or link with a polynomial or something. That is a static view, point of view. That means to give a static photo for every knot. But now we want to we want to link all the photos and form to ask them to form a continuous 
or dynamic movie, right? That is why one picture, one state, another state, another state, another state. Those guys just form a movie. So we want to ask topological invariance to play a role to label every step in a dynamic evolution. All right, so this slide serves as uh, just to give us some technical details. Uh, the origin, the origin is defined by n naught, just this n naught, that is origin. Uh, in the scheme of Jones polynomial, n naught just has a polynomial one. One is e to zero, so that is that is origin. Then we regard, uh, we just use a family of orthogonal polynomials, for example, the round polynomials, to to be the basis, to span the basis. Every point of knot or link has a set of coordinates, C0, C1, Cn. Every Ci is obtained by such a such a integration. Then I think this is uh, acceptable for us, yeah, because that is defined by uh, uh, the round polynomial operations, right? Then a knot has a point uh, representation. A point is just a given a knot or link. Such that optimal or uh, optimal root of degeneration uh, just gives a geodesic in space connecting the started point and the origin. In this page, we just gave the definition, the formal definition of complexity degree. That is such a, a logarithmic operation, right? Then, now we can, we can just use this method to, to measure the knots and links appeared in, appeared in In this picture, in this picture, right? That is uh, UC Davis explanation, uh, experiments, right? Numerical experiment. Ah, here, yeah. Those knots, uh, we have totally 11 knots and links in the picture. We uh, computed all the complexity degrees of those knots and links. They form a monotonically decreasing sequence. As I mentioned, if we are using another polynomial basis, permission polynomial or Alexander Conway polynomial, this sequence is the same, is the same. And we uh, luckily found those three just form the uh, crossing number six group. That is crossing number five group. That is four crossing group, and so on. Right. And we can find totally eleven roots of degeneration. Five roots, four roots, four roots, four roots. Totally seventeen roots of degeneration. Uh, and if we if we just uh, mm, compute the direct distance between T26 and N0, that is the absolute distance. We can also compute the length of every root here of those 11 roots then we can compute the deviation of every root from 
the absolute distance. We found this root, this red one, this red one, has the smallest deviation. How small? Only if my uh, my memory is good. Only zero point zero two seven percent deviation. Yes, here. Yes, this picture is just uh, showing the deviation. The 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 pi one is just uh, go to zero point zero two two seven or something. Yeah. And this page just the say just uh, shows the uh, branching probability at every uh, crossing uh, at every uh, mid uh, intermediate intermediate knot or link from here to here the branching is 0.4% from here to here that is 99.6% in this picture we have two sets of data. The black data is quoted from uh, UC Davis uh, result, and the red one is our data. Just gives our data. We can see the although the data are different, but the trends are the same. That one is probability. Okay, uh, this page just uh, gives us a best fit curve. Uh, this chai, chai is what? Chai is. Uh, is what? A chi is uh, complexity degree, and the d is distance. Ah, uh, uh, yes, chi is defined as this, and uh, we just uh, the horizontal horizontal axis is the sorting. Horizontal axis just gives the sorting of knots and links. The vertical axis gives us complexity degree. Okay. Uh, finally, finally, uh, I just want to uh, show a uh, ongoing work. Uh, my student Guan Hao just uh, um, study the GPE gross Peter Eves equation and do a simulation for a initial configuration, initial configuration uh, borrowing rings. That is, he just realized the borrowing rings uh, as the initial configuration, then let that one to evolve. That is stage one, the original stage. Then next stage is what had link. The third one is travel node. Fourth one, half link. And the final one is not. Uh, we want to we want to analyze the energy and the length of vortices for those guys. This work is still in progress. So conclusion. In this work, we want to uh, realize Arnold's idea that is developing appropriate algebraic invariants uh, to manage hierarchy of physical states. That means we want to develop some scalar tool to manage the energy spectrum. The first tool is crossing sites, or to be exact, rope lengths. Second one is harmfully PT values. Third one is uh, complexity degrees, D 
defined in geometric, uh, in uh, algebraic space. The first uh, two give us a direct relationship between topology and energy, but uh, for two, two and three, we still need to find such a relationship between topology and energy. I think, yeah, that is our future work. Uh, it's only uh, ongoing work. Any questions? We have a hand raised. I wonder who yeah. is this? Please, uh, if you have questions, please. Uh, I have um, a question. Okay. Yes. Uh, yes, please. Go ahead, Keith. Uh, the question is: um, Is um, is a knot uh, uniquely determined by its Legendre polynomial. Um, I mean, if I take a given knot, it has a Legendre polynomial. I don't know how you define it exactly, but if I deform that knot without changing the crossing around, I simply deform it in a continuous manner. Does the Legendre polynomial remain the same? We just use the round polynomial as a basis. Uh, if we change the shape of a knot, uh, because Jones polynomial uh, is unchanged uh, yes, under Rademeister modes, so yes. uh, uh, yeah, uh, the round polynomial is just uh, used. Uh, to span uh, algebraic space. It's just the basis. Well, it's a question uh, we how, are you using... the, how you define the Legendre polynomial, really. I, I don't know how you define it. How to, you mean? Ah. You, do you define it in terms of the Jones polynomial? My understanding of your question is, you want to, you want to find the counterpart of uh, one particular Legendre polynomial in knot poly, uh, in knot theory. Yeah, you want to find you want to find a knot which has the Jones polynomial exactly as a particular given. No, wait uh, a minute. Legendre polynomial. Um, suppose Is I that just your take question? the trefoil knot. Take the right-handed trefoil knot as an yeah. example. Yes. We know it's Jones polynomial. My question yeah. is, what is what is its Legendre polynomial? I think Shin, you can show the slide where you show the uh, the relationship between the the Jones polynomial and the Legendre polynomials that gives you the constants of C i. Um. Here, yeah. This, oh, I see. yeah. So this, this v k is it the Jones polynomial? That's right. Uh, yes, Jones Jones polynomial. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. We are using this to compute yeah. the coordinates. I see. So there is this unique determination of the c constant, mm. and um, for the given knot, it is unique. Yes. yes, it is unique. Yes. Each point in the space uh, uh, represents a knot through its Jones polynomial. Yeah. What and to... Uh, fix for a given link. Uh, what determines N exactly? N. Ah, this N. This yeah. N is, uh, is uh, decided by the leading power of the Jones polynomial. Oh. Yeah. Uh, higher, how about the higher terms? No higher terms. There is a no. truncation here. There's a truncation mm -hmm. here, yeah. That is determined by a uh, theorem from linear algebra. Okay. We have a question from uh, from the chat. 
So Vinicio uh, Gomez asks uh, if uh, you can say anything about the unknotting number of a knot. Have you considered unknotting number in your approach? Uh, I think in... Ah, oh, sorry. As you in, know, in, in the, the unknotting number is another invariant of knots and links, and uh, so the question is, would, would it be somehow, would, would it play a role in, uh, in your, in your uh, 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 discussion, in your presentation? I, I, I think uh, so far, so far in uh, for John's polynomial scheme, we cannot do that because John's uh, is uh, ambient, ambient isotopic invariant, right? If we want to uh, deal with unknotting, I guess we, we we need to have some regular isotopic isotopic invariance. Do you think so? Unknotting. Well, I because think, we I have think we have twists. Yes, the question also hints at uh, a possible relation. If I may uh, interpret uh, uh, the question on the chat, so I'm over interpreting what is the crude question. But suppose I'm doing right. I I guess. Uh, there is a hint at saying, can you, can you see any connection between reconnection uh, process, uh, single recon anti-parallel reconnection, and the unknotting number? I wonder if you, if you have any comment on that. I think the only comment I can see is, um, for example, if we in future, oh come on, if we in future we can find a way to to do the um, um, orthogonal expansion for hopefully PT polynomial, then we can we can do some work in that direction for unknotting, right? That is why I, I mentioned to you, uh, in future we have to find a way to do the orthogonal expansion for home for the PT. Yeah, home for the PT is a two-parameter orthogonal, uh, a two-parameter uh, polynomial. So we have to find two-parameter orthogonal polynomial basis to do the expansion. Yeah. Yeah. That's all. Thank you. Do we have other questions? Okay. If not, uh, well, I thank you, Shin. Shin, thank you very much again. And uh, thank you. all the thank best you to everybody. Yeah, thank, thank you, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.